Properties upcoming meeting, planning to select or failing. The first order I'd like Looks to ask like Kevin to oh, make his presentation first. Okay. So, um, last meeting, there's some, you know, work trying to use that reuse in the building and really determine that it wasn't a very good approach to, you know, uh, you know, the building, uh, the, you know, the quality of the educational space that it was going to provide to you. So, you know, we, we were looking at a, you know, a new building as, you know, to take over this, thinking that the costs would be, you know, comparable between new existing or new renovation and addition. And plus, you would get a better zone uh, with lower operating costs uh, in the long run. And so, you know, we went back and, uh, and uh, you know, looked at different options for uh, the floor plan. as far as the uh, the classrooms and I think that we wanted to kind of look at that you know and you'll see late, you know later on in the presentation that there's a reason why we're trying to cut space out and that's because we've gotten the cost estimator involved and the cost per square footage is higher than what we had originally thought that was going to be. I do think that he's hedging a little high because he's used to doing buildings that are done by the MSBA so you know the I'm not saying that this building is going to be like less useful or anything like that, less functional. But I think when you get involved with MSBA, I don't know if you've ever experienced working with them, um, but it tends to be a more expensive process. And you know, and I guess you know what you need to include in the building makes it more expensive. And so you know, I don't think that we need to do that here. We can still provide a nice space. Um, you know, we're going to be looking for ways to cut costs. That's just the, the nature of the piece that we're dealing with. So, um, so one of the one of the ways to do that, and the, the biggest way to do that, is to you know cut square footage, unfortunately. So we're looking at three different options, and you know this one is the, the has the most classroom space in it. It's got three regular classrooms and a large classroom, and so I. I I did put the cost down at the bottom. They're pretty small here, but you can probably see them you know, if you're looking at the bottom. Uh, so the cost estimator has been what, you know, if you look at the plan and, you know, even going back and forth with him a few times, you know, he's saying that the cost is probably going to be between 450 and 550 per square foot. And we had it as 350 to 450. So. Um, sign of the times, hope, you know, hopefully and not hopefully we'll hit a recession and you'll benefit from that. Uh, Kevin, can I just ask one question? Sure. Uh, so far, so far, like, at the last meeting, I'm not sure they were jumping the gun, but it has some other costs, some other estimated costs. Yeah, there, there's yeah. more more stuff later on here. That's just the cost for the, the, bill, for the building itself. Yep. And so later on, you'll see that I've added all those costs Thank and tried to make an estimate of what those costs will be rather than just giving percentages. And so you'll see a total project cost rather than just the building cost. So um, yeah, this one has three standard classrooms and one large classroom. This one is two standard classrooms and a large classroom. And this one just has three standard classrooms. So you know they, they go from the highest amount of square footage to the lowest of square footage based on classrooms. You know, after this conversation, you may decide that you know we need to probably look at other ways to cut. If um, you know if you're thinking that the cost is going to be more than what you're going to be able to fund. So um, Shelby, you want to? Or last month, 
At this point, I think there's a copy of that original sketch at the back of the presentation to be for reference. The thing that has changed in this configuration is now we move all the classrooms to the one corner oh. to kind of, uh, and then move the louder um, program space, like the, the Propella Pair Shop to the farther side, just to reduce noise and also um, protect like cleanliness and um, keep it as separate as possible. We played around, like we said, like Kevin was saying, played around with adding the fourth classroom, which originally wasn't a part of the uh, program. But uh, we just wanted to explore that option as part of the, uh, the new building. Um, in this configuration, the head house, the gym house, and the still for the far side, um, with the retail kind of being a separate, like completely separate area um, from the main entrance, which is where the students would come from. Um, so that's that. That's that um, option. Probably down there is in the lower right corner. Okay, so, um, and so this option we played a little bit um, with moving the spaces around just a, a smidge, separating the classrooms and the repair shop even more for um, sound and light protection. But we really wanted to try and explore the idea of moving the greenhouse and the headhouse area closer to the classrooms and the project space, just so it's all kind of a nice flow of program. Um, and then moving from the entrance from more central locations farther to the right, or to the left, excuse me. And um, this one has its plus and minuses. It's nice to have all the program space next to each other, but it does create some um, complications with the built form. Obviously, the footprint's a little bit more complicated, and so costly. Um, but it was an interesting exercise. We could also play around with the idea of flipping these two again. While they would separate, be separate from the classroom space, the greenhouse, the, it would be nice to kind of get another, remain or retain that separation of the retail space from like the main entrance. So that way there's a little bit more of a barrier between public and student access. Those are our two primary layouts that we're looking for. And I think either one that we go with, you know, what we can make them work, uh, it's just going to be, you know, how you want your educational space as well with the, uh, with the uh, retail space. And, uh, you know, we're kind of, you know, fighting, uh, you know, a conflict between the greenhouse being attached to the retail and the greenhouse being attached to the, to the like, academic space. And that's really just a priority of how how important the separation between like public retail spaces to like that kind of um, should we So yes. okay. So with the updated programs, we went through three potential updated programs based on how many classes and how many standard versus large classrooms. This is showing a max out. So three standard size classrooms, a large classroom. Um, so this is the, the biggest you're going to get for both of them. Yeah, and then, you know, depending on the conversation today, you know, we can go back and refine it, so that it does reduce the pattern. Um, so we have and it's going to be a minor reconfiguration. But then, so we have these two basic options that we just reviewed. So we have these on the three programs, because that was the program that makes the most sense, and it was kind of weak.
obviously this higher roof is where we have the garages and the climbing structure and everything, so we're trying to maintain that height for those uses. But minimize lowering the roof or you don't really need it in those classrooms just so you're not wasting a ton of space on um, just air. <laughs> and um, trying to maximize your use of fuel. Um, in these options, so you can see, we did start to play around with including the basement in these. Uh, just um, at the bottom here, you'll see it. So these were the kind of the more dynamic like, options we were looking at. These are definitely a little bit um, more complicated and will likely be more costly, but they are more, more efficient, and again, using the space to um, keeping it the high high points for like the uh, structures in the garage, the garages, but also um, creating nice uh, spaces within these classroom settings. These also have create options for letting in more daylighting um, into the bigger garage spaces from by creating fire story windows along here, here, and here. Um, so those are kind of what we're planning to do. Do you have anything else to add? Nope, I think you covered it. I, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I think that, you know, the, the cost issue is probably the overriding factor here. And so, you know, we, we can continue to, to play with this afterwards once we know a little bit more about, you know, where we're heading. Um, you know, we, we did get a lot of, like, uh, input from the estimator as far as, like, you know, what we would need to do here to start, um, you know, well, not start, but keeping the cost down, making everything as efficient as we can, and um, I, I go through this. I think the site plan is nice if you want to. I like you being up there more than me, so. <laughs> <laughs> outside the project areas and the equipment uh, areas, and then also potentially provide a outdoor project area too for future use. Um, this sh uh, kind of rotates the plan from the original uh, idea, and it re requires some kind of reshaping of the uh, this back gravel road that exists back there. Um, but I think the intent with that was to make it as easily accessible in terms of ADA standards as possible. Um, just making a clean cut like the route through the site. Um, and also this, the way that this is um, kind of re, re topoed is to help with also drainage. So not getting too much water build up on site. Yeah, so, you know, we're trying to, yeah, I think what the site planner does, we got this kind of at the last minute, so we're going to have really an opportunity to, like, push it back at them, but we, we are straightening it out, and I'm not sure, but it, it almost seems like they're affecting the front cave driveway a little bit, because I thought that had a, uh, it's not, yeah, it's not, I don't believe it's shaped like that. Or not, yeah. okay. Otherwise, it would be into the ball field. Yeah, so they didn't really put the proper, Top, you know, the contour lines over that area, um, the way they would be affected. So we'll, we'll go back to them. I mean, I like the approach and the thought of it, and I think it uh, interacts with the campus a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so in that back part, we're just about ready to start building another structure. So I, I guess I'd want to know where exactly, how far back I can go and build with not impeding anything there if this is what you end up doing. Yeah, I, I do think that we're going to be, you know, uh, grading out, you know, if yeah, you want just, a work just, area and a road there, right. you know, it's going to affect it. And I'll show you. We'll down, yeah, we can. Work. I don't think we need a, a work area behind, necessarily. It's more the space to be able to pull equipment in and out and 
okay. park. We're not actually going to be working right behind there. Okay. We'll be working elsewhere, but if the equipment's going in and out, we need to be able to get in and out. Okay. You know, and yeah, because we have this like area back here. Yeah, that that, yeah. I mean, we're going to need that space for the equipment. Right, if you're going to pull in and out on the turnaround. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can uh, you know, make it a little bit tighter to the building there if you don't need it. But I think, you know, the road is like, kind of rerouted through here. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, and, and I'm not sure I like the idea of doing this because I think it affects quite a bit um, when you, you start to super grade that. down that road. Yeah. Instead of making that slow turn. Well, that also looks like it goes into the corner of the football field. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a little bit of a problem. So, um, like I said, we got this up last minute and they didn't really ask us if that was okay. Um, we'll get it straightened out. So, um, yeah, any, I guess any questions on this or, you know, on the plans? Like, where do we need to go, I guess, with with the plan. I mean, we'll get into the cost, I mean, because I think that's going to be a shocker um, once we see that. Um, but, you know, just some ideas from the estimator about how to keep the cost down. We did talk about a pre engineered metal building, and he said that when you get into this type of, uh, of a use, that it's not as competitive as you could do with like a wood frame building. So just a simple wood frame building would be less expensive. And, um, I think, uh, you know, and I, I was trying to stay with a non-combustible type of structure just because of the history of, you know, how this project came into being. But we will have sprinklers in the building, and so, you know, and we'll have protections, you know, of, you know, fireproof uh, materials covering over structures where we need to. But it's it's um, you know not where I thought we would be going. But it does open up some flexibility for you know for doing different things with the building. Whereas the pre-engineered building was, was pretty much a kind of a set rectangle with you know steel vents. You know, I mean, you've all been in those type of barn structures before. So. Um, just to talk about the structure a little bit more, you know, concrete slab on grade. Obviously, it's going to cost less if we don't do the basement. Um, so it's something maybe to consider. Um, it is a, an easy place to uh, to create storage, and so we just have to kind of weigh the weigh the cost of that. So wood frame walls. These are like a metal, a simple metal panel with um, exposed fasteners would be something we would use. Maybe something to dress up the front of the building. We do uh, like a split faced or a, a ground face block, um, you know, just to not have it be so, you know, so plain and then um, I guess it's one single material for the whole thing. And we, get, we can look at that, play with, play with how that works also. You know, we may have a, a pretty standard, you know, long building face on the front, but we can do different things to break up the elevation. Um, Membrane roofing on the flat roof areas if we end up going that way or shingle roof or shingles on the slope roofs. Aluminum windows, he he said, you know, we, we really can't get into storefronts or um, except that they get entrances or curtain walls in the system. Which are more way more expensive. And then the exterior doors. Um, interior um, wood frame walls with sound insulation and abuse resistant gypsum board. I think typically, and you know from working here, that you have all concrete block, and um, you know to keep the cost down, we gotta we gotta stay away from masonry as much as we can. Um, and we'll try to, you know, at the corridors, you know, we want to be a little bit more protective of the walls there, so we'll have that um, uh, impactor abuse-resistant gypsum board that takes abuse a little bit more, and we can put you know corner guards on. You know, exposed corners, and then put a uh, put a wainscot type of material on the lower parts of the wall that are susceptible to uh, damage more than the upper parts, especially in the corridors. Classrooms, uh, 
we'll have to talk about the shops. May, we may want to do something more there just because they're heavier, heavier use and probably more of use. Um, but we can, we can kind of work with that. And uh, floors, sealed concrete, if we can, if you're open to doing that. Um, VCT is the next, like, most more expensive uh, flooring option. And you know, I've been thinking about doing like a stained and polished concrete, but that just, it, you would think that would be less expensive, but it's actually more expensive than VCT. Um, so epoxy paint on the floors in the shops, you may have oil that gets on the floor, so you want to be able to clean that up. Uh, and walk off mats at the entrances just to try and keep the buildings clean. Uh, open ceilings at the classrooms and the shops, if, if, um, and just suspending acoustic panels or lighting and uh, trying to keep all the, the mechanical equipment kind of contained. And, and I was thinking, you know, if we had a high roof area, we could create a platform within the building and put all the mechanical equipment on that and not put it on the roof, that way it's protected. Kind of a typical way at Lower Pioneer Valley, they have kind of a system like that, um, where they have a platform, concrete platform with mechanical equipment, and it makes it easy to maintain and um, protect it from the weather. Uh, and acoustic ceiling tiles or you know chips or even in bathrooms are you know you want to keep people out of the ceilings. Um, the MEP systems, um, I know that the, I don't know if, how familiar you are with the stretch energy code, but a new code is coming and I think Northampton is going to grab onto it and there's a few things in here that are going to probably come into play with this building, you know, and that's avoiding the use of fossil fuel. And I don't know if you feel strongly about that one way or the other, but it's kind of the way things are headed. Um, and, and we'll also need to kind of look into maybe how much electricity is back there to to be to be used because we may be more than what the capacity is uh, you know for what's back there right now. We'll have to look and see what that is. But so um, heat pumps or VRF systems are pretty are becoming more common now. I don't know if you're familiar with those. Basically, it's a heat pump on the outside of the building that feeds to a control box that sends a uh, refrigerant out to like cassette units. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, they, they do use the wall units as one one measure of, um, you know, distributing heat and cooling. That's probably just cooling or right? that that you go over there. So it, it does, does well. There. So they also have um, ceiling units that do the same thing. Um, and we'll have to, you know, however that ends up working out. Um, but that's um, a way to do it uh, with electricity only. You know, it's not, it's not as good as like a centralized heating or cooling plant. Um, you know, it's more maintenance, but it is a, a, low, a lower cost electrified option to, um, to use. Um, they have uh, heat pump water heaters. You can use that or you can use the ins instantaneous. And then, the benefit of using this type of system is that we don't have to bring gas, you know, natural gas from, you know, distant places on the site to get to this building. So there's a, a pretty substantial cost and also, you know, not trenching the paving and causing problems and, you know, that result from doing that also. Um, some of this stuff is pretty common sense, keep sinks to a minimum to reduce plumbing, uh, using you know, like LED light fixtures will save costs and Another part of the stretch energy code is um, making roofs solar ready if you're not going to do solar. So here are the costs. Um, if you go with heat electric heat pump, yep. that, how would you be focused on heating the greenhouse? That may, well, that may be, um, Right now, the greenhouse has a water system. Yeah, it would probably be an electrified, um, you know, similar type of heating unit to what's there, but without the water. So you'll see that the um, the cost kind of start at 
you know, 8.2 million for the first option, and then they reduce down. So, you know, I know that 7.3 is probably beyond your what we talked about the last time, but I think that's where we would end up with that as the, you know, with that program being the, um, you know, kind of the, the best of these as far as like cost goes. Uh, but we could, you know, reduce down further if needed. That includes the other cost that you listed at the top It does, yeah. So, um, I mean, this is this is kind of where construction is at right now. Um, hopefully, we'll see some reductions in the near future. You know, but you know, at this point in time, I can't predict what's going to happen. So this is kind of where we're at. On your three cost plans, you have the square footage the same. No, oh, sorry, that that was a mistake. Okay, I was, was going to say it was a quick. cost look quickly. different, but. Okay. I think we need to have more meetings to lock this down because every time they come, it gets higher. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's going to get lower? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I suppose I could have gone to the cost estimator earlier, you know, with some of these thoughts, but um, I, I wanted to get this real down a little bit more. So the, the OPM fees, that's the last one on the bottom, and I don't have anything included for that, but, you know, when the project gets over a million and a half, it's a state law that I earn OPM. But I was thinking that, you know, you may have a resource, you know, here that you can use for that particular purpose. You know, that's that's kind of what some some facilities or uh, agencies, you know, do when they have that expertise on site. OPM and to me means other people's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is owner's project manager. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. seeing with some of the other buildings we're trying to do here is that we had a medical center and then everything came in way over across and they canceled that. And now I'm hearing that the dog control building that the city wants to put on our property, that their bids are coming in crazy way over. So that slowed that project down as well and now we're facing this one. So it's, uh, it's just reality of where things are today. I could just ask to do my due diligence. Um, and back to last meeting, uh, thank you for all that. It's great. My only question from the last meeting, looking at option one and two, which were the using the existing building and then kind of renovating and building new. Um, the two questions I had, one was, it looked like the greenhouse was part of the building construction estimate. But when we're using the existing building, we're not touching the greenhouse. so. We probably should pull that square footage out to give us a better idea of potential cost. 
was question number one. Yeah. And then uh, question number two uh, was question number two was looking at the potential cost range. If we're taking the existing building and renovating it versus a new construction, is it cheaper to take an existing shell and be working it, or is it cheaper to start from scratch? It it depends on what you know what you want to do with it. I mean, with what I'm seeing in that building is that you probably just want to gut it. Ideally, I'd love to just gut it. Yes. You know, because you're going to have to replace the mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems. You know, in that building that are you know how old now? Um, Seventy-five or thereabouts. Um, you know, till now. So they're probably all, everything is at the end of its you know useful life, and, so, and you don't want to count on it for another 50 years, which you know is generally you know what I try to do. You know, it's sure. 50, 50 solid years out of what whatever we do or plan to do. My, my only, I guess, my at the end of the day, my only concern I just wanted to have an answer from the committee, you know, we it to the full board and then the community potentially. I don't want to tell the full board or the community that doing a new construction is cheaper, when in reality it may not be cheaper. It might be the right decision. Um, it may be the best decision for the school, but it may not be the cheapest option. I just, you know, when I looked at last last meeting, the new construction option, because we weren't looking at the other costs, came in as like the cheaper option. And I just don't know if it's the cheaper option. It might be the best option. So I just I want to be as transparent and factual to the full board and the community when we choose that I'm with everybody. I, I want a new building. Um, I just don't want somebody on the full board and the community to say, I can leave it up for you. It's the cheapest option, but it doesn't seem cheaper to me. And I don't want to be caught in that corner. I want to have the facts. That's all. That's my question. I think when we give this to the cost estimator, I can have them. You know, I can describe a project where we try to maintain that building and um, and get that answer for you. I can't I can't give it to you really right now, but I, I'm looking at you know what the plan looks like. It looks complicated. Um, you know, we're going to have to pair up the inside of the building, which is not going to be simple. We also have to deal with the like, code compliance issues, like the change in elevation of the floors. Um, that will just add even more cost to it. So I, I hear what you're saying, and you know, I wish I could give you a real numerical answer to that, but I don't have that right now. Great. In the additional demolition, you know, new construction obviously was demolishing what's existing, so that's why the demolition cost is higher than simply renovating. So yeah, as long as we have all of those variables answered, so anybody out there, the naysayers say, you know, why are you not going to the rest of the building? Why don't you just renovate? Uh, how is that cheaper? I need to have those facts to, to share with people. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, uh, an important factor here is operating costs as you go forward, but it's like nobody thinks about or cares about that when you, when you build a building and, you know, it may cost twice as much to operate the building going forward, but you know that doesn't matter because it costs it's a couple more. Dollars in the building. Right. Just for the, the full committee, I'll share this this evening at the, the board. We did receive the economic bond bill amendment from Senator Comerford, um, but if we use every penny from the insurance settlement on the structure. The first skills capital grant that we receive, that's six hundred thousand that we can apply to the building. If we receive the five million dollar grant that we're going to hear in the middle of December, that's a big gift. That's three and a half million that we can apply to this. Uh, if we applied every penny that we got from the insurance for the last equipment and tools, and now thank you to Senator Comerford, it's two hundred seventy-five thousand that we'll have from the state. And if we use every penny that we've got for monetary donations, we're at five point seven. So we're looking at we're pushing by two million short on the cheapest option. All right. If we bonded the two million here, we talked about that a little bit. Um, is that an option? 
that we paid that ourselves. I think we have to look at Crystal and run those numbers. I think the examples that we had, it was a much bigger bond. Um, I can pull it out. My only, my only rep point of reference would be like, you know, if we take out a mortgage on a house. Um, our monthly revenue that we have at the cell tower is how much? It's like 2600 a month. So if you buy a house and you want your mortgage payment to be $2,600 a month for a 30-year mortgage, how much of a house are we buying? Yeah, so it's I, not $2 million, it's a lot less than that. But that's my only concern. Four point four. So I just did a rough estimate of $2 million with, uh, for 20 years at 5% interest. Because I come with the city bonds, I'm sure it'll be less. We're looking at 13200 a month. We got 2000 So... And we do have that. The cell tower could certainly help, and then we could look at building it into create like a stabilization fund or something like that that would help with you know with building like take instead of putting it in tuition revolving, we'll put it in the stabilization fund. That would be more important. So I'm just making if we made yearly payments instead of monthly, I'm sure that would obviously decrease as well. Space find a way to close by two million dollars. Through a bond of some sort. Other ways. Okay. A lot of big sales. Yeah, right. The next item here is classroom and shop space programming approach, which is basically, I believe, is there is there any appetite for reductions further than where we're at right now? We're going to run away, Mark. <laughs> Classrooms that we were end of the day draw the line and saying how many classes do we need to have down there? Three, correct. Now the size we could try to debate a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to eliminate that one up, just going back to the first plan, if you were to eliminate that extra eight hundred square foot classroom. It has to be two you know, regular side classrooms and it has to be one longer yeah. to fit into what we were trying to do with it. I don't think we can get rid of the large classroom. Right. So we need the two and one. Two yeah. standard and one large. Yeah, because yeah, there's times where we're going to have like 30 kids that we need to put kids in one classroom. And the naysayers out there, so we have the answers potential questions. So as the animal science building is complete, we can't overlap, correct? We need the two and the one in the horticulture building, independent of the two classrooms that we're going to have in the animal science building, correct? Okay. So option B. It's on here, okay. And on the updated program? That option B with the two standard classrooms and the one large classroom. All right. Can I put that in the greenhouse rather than It's not a, it's on the plan. Yeah, but it's not on the floor plan. Yeah, it's not on the floor plan. No. I think the floor plans are showing two regular classrooms and one regular classroom. The floor plans have four classrooms. Four classrooms. So it's at the other end of the building uh, on both of them. So this, this project space is, is that, you're considering that a classroom also? No. 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 Four classrooms. Four classrooms. Okay. Okay. 
There's three on this side. Right, so I think the two floor plan options that we see are all using option A of the program, which is the three standard classrooms and one large classroom. And so if you say we want two standard classrooms and one large classroom, it's simply taking one of the floor plan options and you're working it to eliminate the classroom. All right, if you took option two on the floor plan, I mean, I don't know what the feasibility of if you got rid of that in the corner and then you flipped where the head house, well, see, that wouldn't work. So Mark and I were talking about while you were the presentation that the head house storage attached to the greenhouse doesn't make sense. The head house needs to be attached to the greenhouse. Okay. We kind of we're thinking that, too. Yeah. It's correct in the option one. If you look at option one, you have the head house attached to the right. greenhouse and the storage in the back, which makes sense. space open a wall there no I, I know but if, I'm just thinking if you had that and then the other side where you have the head house the storage is in the front with the openness it's easy that's not an issue but then kids are going through if we're doing something that's the only problem I don't know if you can kind of flip this you could probably rearrange a little bit no, it sounds like you're. It sounds like you're kind of favoring the option one, you know, operation of how the plan works. I mean, you could you could probably get rid of the classroom and move the retail and head out storage to where the classroom was. Yes. And then have a couple parking spaces right there for the store. The operations of option one with the head house greenhouse on that one end to the mm -hmm. entrance. Yeah, kind of like. Yeah, that I like the on the end. Yeah. yeah, we're just trying to pull it closer to the classroom so that, you know, you weren't walking all the way down the hall to get to the to the head house. Right. You know, for the student use of that space. Yeah. You know, we're trying to pull it closer to the classroom, the horticulture classrooms. I mean, the only pull what closer to the classrooms? The head house and the greenhouse because it, it's kind of, you know, it kind of wants to be in both. It wants to be close to the retail, but it also wants to be close to the the uh, horticulture classrooms. I mean, it's, not that, it's not that far. It, you know, like this classroom close to this area here is the, the greenhouse and flooring component. They're here. Right. That's the only thing. But that yeah. can be worked but around easily. Oh, easily, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The construction having the option one is going to be more simple construction design. Yes. Yeah. Kind of a break in the And then we can rework this quickly and get new options back. So thanks. There's probably this. Option B program is the two standard classrooms and the large classroom. And, and that how that looks visually. And are you able to like um, estimate from your time with the cost estimator how much it takes off if you get rid of the basement? Is that a significant savings or? Um, it was going to be a pretty bare bone space, you know, concrete floor, yeah. wood framing, you know, floor framing above. Um, it's a cost, but I wouldn't say it's going to be that significant. Um, I can ask. So option B, so just like option B, which is the two standard classrooms and the large classroom, we're talking is the 7.5 million option. Correct. Add it to him. structure and overall cost would be cheaper. Yeah. 
would it benefit it, us at all or um, help the cost if the garage portions were, were steel prefab parts that we could add on or no? I'm just, I'm just trying to think yes, of ways uh, that yes, would I, like I if you could you know, I, attach I, those because they're garage spaces. spaces. Yeah, and, and that, that's a conversation, you know, and I kind of, uh, you know, we talked about it the last time a little bit is, is taking some of this on, you know, and doing it in the house. It's just, you know, it just complicates it and elongates the time that, that you don't have that space. But, you know, if, if the option is you can't afford it, then maybe that is, a, you know, something to consider. Can like build it and like leave, like save the large classroom, leave that completely undone, and then like the students can right. build it. Shell space, yeah. I guess my only other question I can think of out there would be back to the greenhouse. With the total redo. Currently, the greenhouse is further in, correct? On the site plan? Uh, I guess. Yeah. There's no way to keep the greenhouse itself there and, and work these plans. It would force the entire building down and do it to, to begin to interfere with the road. Yeah. Tripping down there. That could be, I guess. The tail wagging the dog kind of thing. But, you know, it depends on what the elevation is, you know, because we need to make the floor all, you know, uniform in the whole building. And if we end up not, you know, the, the front of the building needs to be higher, I believe, than the back. So I think that would be odd. The only thing that we, we have, I know what we've talked about is, and I don't know if it's going to have to go in the large classroom, is the space for the simulators. classroom but uh, you know if we cut it in half that might work you know oh, that I mean? would probably work if we cut it in half we put the simulators in this we really have like three and a half areas well yeah because i'm pretty sure you'd easily fit the simulators in this teaching station in my classroom which is mm -hmm. 600 square feet and still have space right because it would simply be just for that right so you wouldn't need you know guests and things like that you would just Correct. need be able to operate the simulators in that room and it would be used just for that. Right. So I don't know if that's an idea. Because we do have to keep in mind that we have that coming in. And those can't be in a project space. Yeah. How big is your, your current classroom? Right. My front classroom I think is six hundred and something square feet. Do you have the equipment cut sheets? So we can just lay them out on here. Um, I do not. We haven't ordered anything yet. Okay. 
I just we put them into the grant that was approved. So yeah. that's next year's coming out of next year. Um, I could probably find the footprints. Yeah, easy enough. To put them it, it, they're, if they're what I what I saw in the pictures and the vision, it's not going to be any bigger than a, a video game that you would sit at. So like, if you go to the arcade and you sit down or drive something, it's not going to be any bigger than that.
What is that, Cassandra? Right now it's 20. Kevin, I think we can release you to work with Tim. You're going to get on with that other building. Yeah. And we got still more on our agenda to go forward with. I'm not sure we can do that without Tim. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we can move on to the next part. Well, Rick we actually sent an email. Oh, I can I can report on that. Did you see the email that we sent? It was there quickly. From my memory, I'm trying to remember what you wrote. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry for the bad news. So this is what Rick gave you, I think that's what you do. Yes. So do you want to talk on that? Sure. Getting updates on, and that I, I talked to him periodically. And I spoke to Rick the other day, and I know Rick sent an email to some of us as far as some of the updates I shared with, with Rick. On the agenda, the VA forestry building property in the building, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we still don't have a quote as far as what it would take to get water and electricity up to the building. I haven't heard anything from Tim. I think Chris, I don't think you've heard anything as far as that. No, Joe Cook sent Tim another email asking what is you know what our thoughts were and Tim replied we've already told you this is what this is what the architect has suggested for you know and it's right in the middle of building what we had and we haven't heard back we're talking the force the green water and electricity oh no I apologize I, I apologize no I was no I haven't heard from Tim any, no, any update that's no. why I told him the other day so I don't think there's an update on no. uh, an estimate as far as water and electricity up to the the forest, the forest building. Uh, as far as the use of the, the building, give me an update. Right. Um, they had plans to go up there, but with the freshmen, they can't do that now. But they have plans to go up there to use it. To start pulling out the old Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. I saw them working down back with the equipment. Are they using that as? I know they're repairing that road, that bulldozer and the, yeah. the uh, heavy machinery. Right. Are they using that as training as well on the ninth, The ninth graders um, train on some equipment. Yeah. Not on the road, but usually back in the tennis court area. Okay. They train on some Oh, equipment. I see. And um, they train on the mowers on the um, Right. Okay. As far as Birth Pit Road, uh, this was the old greenhouse up there. 
earlier in the school year, our farm techs were up there reskinning the greenhouse. Uh, I believe that had been completed that aspect of the job. Um, at one point, Tim talked about there was a storage building that we were using for hay. The roof is leaking and whatnot. I haven't heard an update that's been worked on. Um, I know one of Rick's questions was um, Has the reskinning of the greenhouse been completed? I'm pretty sure it has been. Um, as far as the status of the, the roof repairs of the other building, I, I don't have an update. <coughs> Paddock and Apple storage floor repair. Uh, we did receive the bids. Uh, there was an issue with the low bidder with the DTM certificate uh, being out of date. I have not heard of an update. We're going, we, have to, we rejected the bids okay. and we're going back up today. And yeah, we're doing those four small sub bids. And we're going to do it in subcategories, correct? Yeah. Okay. So we're in the process of creating those bids then? Correct. Next, next topic was the drainage issue of Locust Street. Uh, this was part of last month's board meeting. And uh, yeah, based on that discussion and vote, uh, they were going to uh, the Conservation Committee, I, I believe. Um, the city was going to go to the Conservation Committee to, to seek approval. Uh, I haven't heard that meeting has, has happened, honestly. Animal Science Building. Uh, we are in the midst of doing the interior framing. Our carpentry students are doing that. Uh, I have not seen it yet, but uh, I listened to the radio call. It looks like carpentry is working on, uh, work on the, doors. the doors today, so that's, that's a good, good sign. Uh, I don't have a timeline of when <coughs> to finish up that part, but they're actively down there. <coughs> The window project, uh, this was the capital improvement money for the window replacement in A building and B building. Um, as far as I know, we're still on pace and on, on schedule to do the December, February, and April breaks. Um, I believe uh, the contractor had asked through Tim if we had a preference as far as what areas to start with. I told him I don't have a preference. Let's get done. Uh, so that's all I know at this point. Unless you have any other info. Yeah, he's meeting with them to discuss that. A, C, and C building. Um, the last I, I heard through Tim is February or April looking at. Um, but the problem is around the, en the energy management system and some of those requirements and how do we tie in the, the window wall units, correct? And how to right, and that's, um, we did ask for that second year from the city capital to fund that. So Tim's working with um, the architect and um, Chris Mason from the city on that project. So and that's part of what we're presenting tomorrow night, correct? Correct. The second phase, because they've already given us funding for the first. So just as a point of reference, uh, tomorrow night is the first evening of the capital improvement committee uh, work bringing in uh, the department heads to advocate for what we, what we presented. So here we've presented uh, the need for this energy management system for the AC, AC project and C building. That's one project. The second project we're asking for is the hood systems in the cafeteria. And in culinary, we have one hood system replacement through the grant that we got, the skills capital grant. There's another hood, that's the baking hood. Over the, bake, yeah, over over the, the baking, yeah, over the baking area. Yeah. Uh, we're asking for those to be replaced. And, and Tim's argument, I think, is a sound argument. Since we're already getting the one hood system through the grant, let's get all the hood systems done at the same time, so they're all comparable. So they're sure. down the road, if we have to repair anything at all. So, um, so those are the two projects that we're presenting tomorrow night for the city. So that's the AC C building. The sidewalk project, I don't have, granted, that's being funded by the city. I don't have any updates on, uh, on that. The chip activated entry doors, again, this has been, uh, the board did vote to, to fund uh, this. Um, the note I share with Rick is that uh, it's not part of the project, but we had some 
entry doors and some existing shops that had to be replaced. Uh, they have been replaced and they actually do have the FOB system. So uh, it's not necessarily a test run, uh, but we do have some doors that were replaced that will have a FOB system, uh, which once we go campus wide, I'm not sure what will happen with those particular FOBs if we change them out. Or Tim said it would be separate. Okay. Uh, because of the cost of that project. In the, um, the FOB system, so it's working with the vendor. Um, they needed updated pricing from the MHEC contract, um, and they were waiting. And they, the gentleman keeps reaching out to them because the pricing is not updated, and we'll need that for for sure. The last on the agenda, I guess I, I jumped the gun a little bit. The FY24 capital improvement project. So again, that's what we're presenting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. As the hood systems and as the Energy management system in building C. say uh, just back to the uh, e-building options what am I saying this evening to the board you know, with the mayor sitting there uh, I was going to do some quick math and update a slide if I have time but we're probably looking at two million dollars that we're going to be short based on if we right. receive the grant and what the minimum of what we need in that bill that we're looking at uh, we don't have that tuition revolving. We don't want to drain tuition revolving totally. What do we have in there that we might be able to offer up? Well, I'm seeing in the notes from the last property subcommittee, there's talking about using 600000 for horticulture for uh, um, in kind. So that, correct. So that is a grant we just received, the Skills Capital Grant. We can use up to 600000 for construction. The way we wrote the grant was that 600000 from tuition. 600000 from the grant we're going to use to fund all of the animal science renovations. My vision was before the fire, I was going to stand in front of the board and ask for 600000 from tuition revolving to do the animal science renovations. So since the renovations are being covered by the grant, that means 600000 I'll ask for. So yes, tuition revolving will have six hundred thousand dollars towards the building already. What's left, I guess, is what. So what's left exactly. after? So we'll be about a million total. And we don't want to drain it total. No. Nope. And, and yeah, because we have transportation that comes after that. Right. So your, the stabilization funding you alluded to earlier, that's. So annually, if, if we budget correctly and build a, a proper budget, we do have uh, a balance at the end of the year of tuition revolving, of tuition money, so it goes into tuition revolving. We obviously have to build a budget that accounts for transportation. Anything above and beyond that goes in there. So you're thinking rather than dumping it right into tuition revolving, we could create a separate account. Correct. Okay. Correct. So we could budget for it and any funds, you know, we could talk to the board at the end of the school year to see if there's any funds remaining to be transferred into that account. Yeah. But I just have to check Mass General Laws to make sure we can do that. Yeah. Okay. So That's through the operating budget, we might be able to build a, a budget, budget in a way mm -hmm. to set some money aside every year. Correct. Uh, and then we have the cell tower. Yeah. So that will help. Yeah. I mean, it's like 24000 But at least it's something. And if we, did, we could definitely get different scenarios for 20 years and 25 years. Like I said, if we pay it yearly instead of monthly, that will reduce the interest that we pay because we're paying, being paying ahead. So that is be a little bit of savings. 
I hope I'm here. And, and my only thought is, is if that's the case, instead of draining, depending on what the interest rate is, depending, could we just add the 600, 2,000 to whatever we're taking out on the bond? Because it just, you know, start dipping the lower million expenses. Thank you.